Hi everybody, Tammy here, and I wanted to do a video that covers some things that we need to look at wrapping up this school year. So we've made it to the end and we've been using Google Classroom for most of our grade levels. So there are some steps that we uh, really should look at take, taking um, to wrap up the year and set us up for a more organized, a more streamlined and cleaner start to the school year next year. So there's just some steps we want to take. So what I'm going to do is um, head to classroom and show you um, just a few things that you need to do um, when you are done um, with this school year. And I'm just going to use my master class as an example. Okay, so the first thing that I want to talk about is um, work that students turn in. So please understand that when a student is working on a product from Google Drive, that when they turn it in, when they click the button, turn in, then they have transferred ownership of that file to the teacher. So they may have a research paper. They've been working weeks and possibly longer, many, many hours and um, involvement into these products and they are the owner, but once they hit the button, turn in, then the ownership becomes the teachers and the student may only view that document or that file. They are not able to edit it any longer. So it's important that you take this step of returning the assignments back to the students before you finish the year out because you don't need these files. Most of these files, if not all of them, you're not going to need. So you're going to want to clean up um, all the files that you're not needing, meaning maybe remove or delete. But if you will own the files that the students have turned in and you delete it, it is gone. All that work is gone. However, if you return it back to the student, then they are the owner once again, and then it's up to them whatever they do with that work. So the, what you're going to need to do is go to go to your different assignments. And you'll see over here, you can you always see you're turned in and how many have turned it in and are signed. Um, you can go into each one individually and return it here. Or you can click on the students. This is all students. Or I can click on those that have just turned it in and then I can hit the return button up here in the upper left. So that's important that we return the, the assignments and the files back to the students because when you're cleaning up your files, you may wanna delete and you don't wanna own the files that the students have worked so hard on and accidentally delete without them saying, hey, I want that um, assignment back just to have add to a portfolio in the future or just show um, show all the hard work that they had put into it. So that is number one. Please make sure that you return all the work. And I've always said this is probably more important for the upper grade levels that have more involved um, assignments, more complicated uh, work. But um, maybe just make this a habit for all students to return the work and then it goes back to their drive um, as, as they are the owners, and then they can delete as they choose, but you're not deleting something that they would actually like to keep. All right, so that's returning. Um, the other thing is I want to mention is, um, make sure you understand up here, you see that there is a class drive folder. So in your Google Drive, if you haven't ever noticed, there is a folder for Google Classroom and it has folders for all of your classrooms that you've created and all the files and all the work get put into those folders and you can access it from Google Drive. Um, so we want to clean that up in Google Drive and we also want to clean up your calendar. So if you go to the calendar and you can actually go to that classes calendar if you click up at, from the classwork um, tab, um, you are able to, and I'm going to um, go to, um, let's go to the month right here. 
uh, you are able to view all of your calendars here on the left. And if you create a Google Classroom, then it automatically generates a calendar for that classroom. And so students automatically see it when they go to their Google calendars, they're able to see all of their Google classrooms and all of the due dates that are um, for their assignments, they're able to see if you do put a due date on your assignments. So when you are done with Google Classroom at the end of the year, we want to probably, most likely, get rid of this calendar altogether. So what you can do is you just um, hover over that classroom calendar and you can click on the three dots and you can hide from the list and that way it won't show up on the list, but you really don't need it. Um, so you just go into the settings and it will take you to the settings. Now this is for this particular calendar and you will scroll down to the bottom and you will delete. So you will delete that right there and that will get rid of the calendar from um, your Google Calendar, and you're not going to be needing that um, calendar for that classroom any longer. Now let's go back to, um, to the classroom. One thing I want to mention also is if you have multiple classrooms especially, and, and you're starting the new year next year, you're not going to want to have all of these classrooms on your home page. So when you are done, whether you have seven or eight classrooms or you just have one or two classrooms, you're not going to need them anymore. However, there's a lot of valuable information. So a lot of teachers think, oh, I must just need to delete all the students and then keep that for next year. But the best thing to do is to archive these classrooms because you're really not going to want to keep the same classroom for next year because you have posted assignments all throughout the year and you're not gonna want those included. So you really wanna start fresh every year. However, you can copy, you can um, remove, but the best thing to do is to archive these classes. So if there's a class that you're not, um, that you're done with, so you would right click or click on the three dots there and you would archive it. Now this just removes it from your main home screen for your classes. However, when you click on the three bars up at the top and you go to archived classes, you're able to see all the classes that you have archived before. And it's not, if you made a mistake, you just click on the three dots and you hit restore and it will go back. So that's not a big deal. What this does is it freezes this class to where nothing can be changed or edited within that class, but it saves it for the future. Now you may want to, um, a good habit is to remove the students at the end of the year. Um, if there's nothing, you may want to wait a while, that's up to you, but if there may be something that they want to get information from, but you probably um, don't want them to be able to access in the future. Um, so what you would do is remove those students, and I can show you that real quick. But again, when you're done with the class, we'll archive it here, and that just freezes it, but it still allows you to use the material that you have in that classroom for future posts in your future classrooms. So I'm going to go back to my classes. Now let's go back to this one. Uh, when you go to the uh, people, and this is at the end of the year, you can just um, click on everybody here and then just remove everybody. So very easy And you go to people um, to be able to remove everybody and then archive your class. And then you will have a clean home page for Google Classroom and you're ready to go. So let's um, one more thing I want to look at is going to drive. So in your drive, again, you'll have a folder called Google Classroom or just Classroom, basically. Um, I have it color coded, so I'm going to look for that real quick. Um, sorry, sorry, I'm taking some time to load. And I have so many, it kind of gets hidden. But this is all about um, organization. So again, if you look in your drive and you have you own some different Google Classrooms, you're going to see a folder called Classroom. And if you click on that, 
then you're going to see all the folders for all the different classrooms that you have created. And you're going to want to clean this up too. Um, so what you probably should do is just have create a folder right here in classroom, click on new and folder, and then create a, a folder for this year. And then all of your classrooms can, you can put all of those classrooms, you can just literally click on something and just move it, drag it right up into it. Um, so that will keep you organized and keep your classroom folder cleaner for next year. So um, I hope that helps. So just some quick recaps. We want to make sure that we return all assignments especially if they're important or big or um, would be important to the students. We want to return that in Google Classroom to the students to transfer ownership back to them. And then we want to um, probably remove the Google Calendar for that classroom. We want to remove students from the classes once we know that they don't need access any longer. And then we want to archive those classes so we have a nice clean home page for classroom for next year. And we want to um, organize our Google Drive and make sure that we clean up our folder for classroom within our Google Drive. So I hope that helps. Just a few steps to keep in mind um, as we wrap up the year and we prepare ourselves for a very organized year ahead. So let me know if you have any questions and I hope you have a great day.